I'm Mari Cartel, LifeScript.com, and this is your Hollywood Health Report. <music> Roughly 12% of American women will be diagnosed with breast cancer this year, and nearly one-sixth of those women will die from the disease, even though treatments have improved. Mary Hart's grandmother died of breast cancer before she was born, but her mother became a survivor while Mary was still hosting Entertainment Tonight. Now she wants to improve our chances of survival by raising awareness of the disease, and that's why she's here today. Hello, Mary. Mari, great to be with you. So, how old was your mother when her mother died of breast cancer? Uh, very sadly, uh, my mother was only 10 years old when her mother died. So not only did I never meet my maternal grandmother, but my mother barely got to know her own mother because she, she got sick when my mother was about seven years old. So there was two to three years there where she just deteriorated right in front of their eyes. And it was, you know, I, my mother has always, uh, I, I think especially as she's gotten older, missed her mother tremendously. Now, your own mother was diagnosed, and this was around 1998. So how long during your years at ET did this sort of overlap, her treatment overlap? Well, she, um, she had her surgery soon after her diagnosis, and she had a mastectomy, and she's been, she took tamoxifen for a long time. Um, so it was the last, uh, you know, it, it was a couple of years while I was still doing ET. And um, I was there with her when she had her surgery. It was, you know, it's always a shock when you get that diagnosis. Even if we knew, of course, that uh, her mother had died of breast cancer. But you know, way back when she was alive um, and was diagnosed, they didn't really have any answers for cancer in general and specifically breast cancer. They just, you know, did the best they could. They, they removed her breast. But my mother remembers very vividly her mother lying in bed and getting sicker and sicker and less able to take care of the household chores. And my mom was the youngest of six. She had five older brothers. And then the last year, it was even tougher because they felt it was better if my mother lived with her cousin. Um, instead of at home with her own mother. So she was removed from the scene. You know, it's a different, it was a different world then. Absolutely, but you were old enough to understand. Absolutely, I was in my late 40s when she was diagnosed and got the phone call and my, you know, mom is so strong. I mean, she is, she is a survivor in, in so many respects and her attitude was great. She said, look, I'm 74, I'm going to have the mastectomy. You know, and when it came right down to it, the day before, she and I had a real heart-to-heart -heart talk, and she said, even at 74, I don't like the idea of losing a breast, and the big decision was whether or not to have reconstructive surgery. Um, but she decided she opted not to have the reconstructive surgery, because at 74, she said, you know, I, I mean, one surgery is enough. And she got through it like a trooper. How much could you be a part of her recovery? You know what? It, fortunately, they did not think she needed chemo, and that turned out to be the right, uh, right decision. Um, so she did not go through that sometimes torturous process. Um, she came through the surgery great, feeling great. I had taken the week off, so I stayed there and helped Dad with, you know, whatever she needed. And really, we were amazed. Her spirits were terrific, and she bounced back. She said, well, that was easy. Um, and it, I mean, that's, that's the one thing. Uh, you know, she said it was much easier than I anticipated, and I, she's my hero. Wow, absolutely. Attitude, attitude, attitude. That has a lot to do with it. It really does, no matter what your age is. Did you change your lifestyle, your eating habits, anything like that to, to maybe try and prevent getting breast cancer? I certainly have a, my mammogram on an annual basis. Um, and you know, there is great and exciting technology now. 3D imaging is uh, really proving in a lot of instances to be a great way to analyze the breast tissue. The 3D technology may help alleviate some of the confusion and some of the misdiagnosis 
that happens. Um, but in terms of eating, changing my lifestyle dramatically, I've always been very, you know, health conscious. I love to exercise and I try to get plenty of that. I need that as much for my mental health as my physical health. Um, eating right, obviously what we're learning is fatty foods, drinking too much alcohol, you know, doing anything excessively is just simply not good, and especially as you age. Because the facts are that women, as we age, are more prone to coming to being diagnosed with cancers. I mean, it's just something that happens. Whether or not you have the BRCA gene, the genetic disposition for it, you know, whether or not you have a history of, of cancer in your family. Did you do the, the BRCA testing? I did not. I, I have not done it. I still think about it. Um, but, you know, I've, I've had clean mammograms all of these years. So, yes, it, you know, it, it's in my mind. But now, you know, we're moving into this exciting new future of DNA analysis and uh, genomics. And, you know, it's scary and exciting. And it's, it's cutting edge technology. But I'm hearing almost a little bit about that self-fulfilled prophecy in the back of your mind, too, that if you have you know, that kind of aggressive testing you chose not to do BRCA. Is it because perhaps you have that idea of self-fulfilled prophecy? If you, if you do it, then you, you know it's true, then there's a bigger chance? Um, no, I, I just think, you know, I, faith plays a real important role in my life, and I don't want to be naive about it. I mean, like I said, I still think about doing the testing. And the older I get, I mean, I'm in my 60s now, you know, I go, okay, well, maybe I should. I just haven't made the decision whether or not to do it yet. So what would you say to women at this point? What, what, what if you were to encourage them to do one thing, what would you tell them to do? Make sure that you do follow through and have your annual physical, your annual mammogram, if you're at that age or in that higher risk group, certainly. And sometimes I don't listen to my own advice, by the way. And again, I'll say we women tend to worry more about setting up the appointments for our kids and our spouses than we do for ourselves. So pay attention to your own health. Absolutely. Well, I want to thank you so much for taking time out with me today. I know that this is going to be inspiring to a lot of women and maybe get them off the couch to go be a little more proactive about their health. Absolutely. Get off the couch in all respects. Exercise. Pay attention to your own health and well-being, and, uh, you know, that improves everything for your whole family, too. Well, it obviously is working for you. <laughs> Thank you, Mari. It's great to be sitting here and talking about this. Women's health can't think of anything more important. I can't either. Thanks very much. This has been your Hollywood Health Report from LifeScript.com. I'm Mari Cartel. <laughs>